Hey everybody, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil, and it's time to talk QI. Sometimes there's just some weird coincidences in my journey through this show, because months ago I reacted to an episode with Susan Coleman. But the time between when I react to something and when it actually hits YouTube is often close to two months. Um, I have to put it up at least four weeks earlier over on my Patreon, I always give I always feel better psychologically if I have plenty of time between reaction and that scheduled date. So there's often a long lead up. But that episode came out on YouTube just a week or so ago as far as when I'm reacting to this. And I think it I I asked how tall is Susan compared to Sandy because Sandy was making short jokes at Susan's expense, which just seemed crazy because Sandy's always the victim of those jokes. And a bunch of you immediately chimed in saying, you have to check out this episode called Post from Series P, and you'll see exactly how small, how small Susan actually is. And now the irony, of course, is I had that episode in my queue I didn't even have to add it. It was like waiting for me to jump into, and now here I am about to watch episode 16 from series P called Post. And now I know what I'm about to find out. I'm about to find out how short Susan Coleman really is. And I don't know who the other guests are. I don't know if there's other funny moments. She was hilarious in that last episode I reacted to, so I'm expecting more of the same from her. But who the other guests are? Who knows? It's going to be a great episode. I'm really looking forward to it. Let's jump right into it. Here we go. This one's called Post. <sighs> Happy place. Tonight we're going positively postal. It's Matt Lucas. Oh, okay. Come on with care. It's Holly Walsh. Nice. Holly looks nervous. It's Susan Kalman. And please do not leave unattended. He may be removed and destroyed without warning. It's Alan Davis. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, I'm his black and white cat. I've heard of Postman Pat, but I don't think we ever got it over here. Can you fill in the blanks here? Who is that, first of all? That's uh, Tony Blackburn. It's... Do we guess letters? You can if you like. Uh, okay. A. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But I'm not going to tell you, you where. Tell me where. P. Po. 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 Po is good. Post. Postcodes. 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 There's no uh, letters for postcodes. Yes, I use W1. Uh, oh. 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 An actual postcode. When did we start having postcodes? Anybody have any 60s. idea? Sixties. Sixties. No, it's earlier than that. Twenties. So there was 30s. a man. A man called. Forties. <laughs> <laughs> he first had the idea. Eighteen fifty-seven. What? But the actual postcodes that we have were not generally introduced in the UK until, in fact, the year I was born, 1958. Shut up, Sandra. What? You're the 70s at least. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's just sucking and up for points. <laughs> <laughs> but people didn't use them. So Tony Blackburn, that dates from 1980s. So why did people not use them? Well, sometimes I don't know my own postcode. You don't it's know just... your postcode? <laughs> you know that way you think of a different postcode where you once lived. No. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember my postal code from the street I grew up well, on. I've got a document called Until I was 12. My computer. <laughs> Presumably your computer is password protected. Yes, I know document. the password to that one oh. because it's my name. <laughs> So, anybody who breaks into your home because you're on QI at the moment. <laughs> she can't remember where she lives, so I don't That's know. true. <laughs> Maybe we could get the burglar to ring you and tell you where it is. <laughs> Ireland only adopted postcodes in 2015. Really? But they are unique, Ireland, in that it's the only country in the world where every address has a unique postcode. Oh, so all you should need to do if you're sending a mail to an, an Irish person is write the postcode and nothing else. Describe exactly Alan's current position. You'll have to look under the desk. <laughs> Three words. 
Is what you're doing there deliberate, or is that just the way you sit? Well, I'm just sitting on my hands, that's all. Oh, it, um, is it sitting on hands? <laughs> <laughs> so, in terms of where he is, his exact location, the only correct words are, in this exact order, joke, proof, value. It's what? Alan's precise current address, according to one of the most exciting things I've ever heard of, called What Three Words. This is what? a British company, and they have divided the Earth's surface into squares, which are three metres by three metres. And they have assigned each one a unique three-word code, and it has already been adopted by actual countries. So in Mongolia and the Ivory Coast, they're the first to adopt it as the official address system. At uh, the front doorstep of uh, Buckingham Palace, sound manual lungs. At the top of Ayers Rock, or Uluru, snake removes gymnast. Susan's broken. Being let out, isn't it? <laughs> Just put the little thing in the side. <laughs> 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 I think the kids have been playing with it. Oh, no. This seems to be overcomplicating things. The thing about it is that you couldn't confuse it with anywhere else in the world. You say that, but people pissed in a cab. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then you, next thing you know, you're dropped off at, like, an airport in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> we have actually written... Uh, using the What Three Words system to the British Embassy in Mongolia. I have to tell you, they've not arrived yet. Oh, dear. <laughs> the fuck's that? I oh, know. <laughs> oh. See, oh. Thing, look at that update down below. That's, they look suspicious. That doesn't look a like a proper... A terrorist list. demand. A terrorist <laughs> demand. <laughs> now, why would you give your postie a rocket? To get your letters into space. Are you allowed to post a rocket? Uh -huh. I know you're allowed to send a gun, but you can't send it with ammunition. <laughs> Same thing as pin numbers. You can send a credit card, but you can't send a pin number with That's it. That's true. And in uh fact, you can send a toilet, but not with a poo in it. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favourite dinner party questions. OK, go. Is, um, if you had to get a gun by midnight tonight, who would you ask? Seriously, it's really... what kind of dinner parties do you <laughs> Well, I mean, I have friends who hunt. Could it be a hunting gun? Yeah, just got to kill someone. <laughs> Holly's on a... I would have people for that. Yes. <laughs> have you read in the papers? What a tragedy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two of your friends would be able to score drugs for you by midnight. I've got a few friends on HRT, then I run out. <laughs> <laughs> who would you shoot? Then? Yes. No, not who I'd shoot. That's oh. a completely different dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> Does someone else just sit down? with a Nigella Lawson cook and make some squid, OK? That's yeah. what I do when I'm going to a Nigella, Nigella. get you a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and some drugs. The idea is to try and send the post very, very quickly. Very, very right. fast, If you indeed. can. So the very first attempt to send mail up was a hot air balloon in August 1859 from Lafayette to Crawfordsville in Indiana. Unfortunately, the wind blew him 25 miles in the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But about 1824, Sir William Congreve, he attempted to deliver mail from Tonga to Samoa by rocket. It had limited success. Uh, it, there's possibly a few letters with, still with at the taller trees in Tonga, yeah. And then in the 1930s, there was a German engineer called Gerhard Zucker, mm -hmm. and uh, he toured Germany demonstrating his rocket post. It okay. sends a single grape. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> thought it was an olive. In fact, it was just a huge metal container attached to eight fireworks. Um, <laughs> and uh, weirdly, nobody in Germany was interested. So he came to Britain in 1934. They went to the Outer Hebrides to test the idea. And he loaded his rocket with 1,200 letters, including one to the king. It was between the two islands of Harris and Scarpa. The whole thing blew up. He was deported back to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> It has a happy ending. He served with the Luftwaffe in World War II. So oh, oh yes. Uh, for centuries, people have tried to send mail by rocket, but it's never taken off. Oh. <laughs> now, what is the most useful thing you can do with this? What is it? These are some... What is it? Oh, it's, is it just toilet paper? Uh, you medicated. Oh, yeah. Do you yeah. remember it? Yeah. Medicated? Yeah. Medicated with what? It didn't so much wipe as just move the poo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like airmail. Oh, you send it to a prisoner and they can use it to roll drugs in. Mm. <laughs> Holly's just on a drug kick I today. I feel you're so close to a life of crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's true, man. You can make a Camberwell carrot out of one of these. Well, I was just thinking it, it was more... <laughs> Let me try, let me try, let me try. You never tried, tried. No, you never, never tried, tried weed. Have a pan on that, man. Okay. <laughs> just, just, just breathe it in. Yeah. Breathe it in, yeah. keep it in, breathe yeah. it in, hold yeah. it, hold yeah. it, hold yeah. it. Don't bogart the joint. Oh, <laughs> what was a bogart? Bogart the joint means yeah. when you keep holding you have it and to pass. don't share it around. Where does the term bogart come from? No idea. From Humphrey. Humphrey bogart, um, I guess. Cigarette. Were there bogart cigarettes? Well, no, there's the way he, the manner in which he smoked. No. Can you write on it? You can. Why might you want a paper like this? It's Very lightweight light for airmail. Air mail. Air mail, exactly Eel. right. Yeah. We all used to write home on Eisel paper because it was cheaper than airmail paper. We used to use a new role at my boarding school. On a Saturday night when everyone came in from a rave, if they thought you were pissed, they'd make you walk along it. That's what? astonishing. Drugs, Why drink, they... guns. Why did they? <laughs> Why did they do this to us as children? Was it to deter us from doing number twos at school? But they wait till you get home. Yeah, but if you didn't get home for three months, it was a bit. Tricky. <laughs> 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 thing here called the secret office sometime in the mid 17th century we don't know exactly uh, because obviously secret secret mm -hmm. uh, it was a subsection of the post office and they read post that arrived from foreign countries they would then harvest anything I think that... the person who put the hat rack just put it too high for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that hat rack is my life <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the positives of doing uh, Strictly Come Dancing was that uh, my boyfriend Kevin showed my wife how to lift me to get things out of the supermarket <laughs> properly. So when we go to the supermarket now, we do a dance lift so I can get to the top shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Any idea how modern it sounds to say, my boyfriend taught my wife? <laughs> <laughs> they put cat food on top shelves because it's usually... Tall people. Tall people have, have cats. cats. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> Short yeah, people just, have dogs and yeah, tall what, people have cats. Yes. Giraffe food is very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Famously, those magazines were on the top shelf. Yes, and I yes, think they still are. Boys in couldn't get them. Yeah. yeah. But a nudie book in those days was just nipples and pubes. That's, <laughs> that was National Geographic. Nipples and pubes. Oh, we're going to Papua New Guinea this week. Is my address. <laughs> <laughs> In theory, the secret office was closed down in 1846 and the records destroyed in 1851, but, you know... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Susan, what is one of the tricks that you can do because of your height? I can um, stand up completely straight in the, the back of a black cab. Yes. So... <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd see if you can fit in a pillar box. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Oh, I've been warned about this. I'm way too tall. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Five foot versus four foot nine. I'm standing up completely straight. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right, carrying on. Uh, <laughs> what would happen if you posted yourself <laughs> to number 10 Downing Street? And would you get delivered to number 11 and a card put through the door saying there's a parcel? <laughs> Try, post yourself to number 10. People must have done. Gordon Brown used to in the old days. <laughs> 1909, two suffragettes posted oh, themselves oh. to number 10 Downing Street because they could not get an appointment to see the Prime Minister. It was perfectly all right in those days to post people by express messenger. In fact, there are photographs of children being oh, transported no. using really? this system. People posted... tried to post themselves across the Berlin Wall. But that was actually wrapped up as a parcel. These women were not wrapped, oh, yeah. as you can see. They were just themselves. But the gentleman who's come out from number 10 has refused to sign for the human letters. The post office actually played a huge part in the suffrage movement. Uh, they would smash windows in post offices. They poured acid into pillar boxes. They set fire to post boxes. They put pepper into letters, sent them to anti-suffrage MPs. And in tribute to them, you locked a woman in, in a letter box. I did. <laughs> <laughs> in the last election, uh, I thought I might stand for Prime Minister, so I phoned up to see if I could look round the house, because I thought, well, I'm not going to do it. If... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they refused. Is there anything worth stealing? <laughs> not now. I've been. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
also, here's the thing that I bemoan, is the loss of the London Pneumatic Dispatch Company. It used oh. to be... Oh, did they have pneumatic tubes? could be sent through pneumatic tubes. So, 1863 oh. uh, to 1874, he tested it by travelling in one of oh, the okay. post capsules, and this became a thing that drunk Victorian gentlemen... <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it was closed down... Uh, when one of them died. <laughs> <laughs> There's a restaurant in Christchurch, New Zealand, where your food comes in one of those tubes. A pneumatic tube. So it's not a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so not soup. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sushi rolls, hot dogs, burritos. Give me your best impression of a 19th century poster girl. Well, Susan's is rather good. Is it, um, is it a <laughs> woman? Is it this? Uh <laughs> they were late 19th century human billboards. She's yeah. covered in food! Yes, well, everything she's doing is advertising the bakery that she's involved with. The one on the left there is all household goods. I love her hat. Are you sure she's around. not advertising magnets? <laughs> <laughs> that is the best thing I've ever seen in my life! <laughs> so, in the early 2000s, this kind of came back and people sold off... Where did they advertise? Some people sold off, like, they would do tattoos. Of, yeah. Down below, yes. on my thing, I've got um, Safeway, everything you want from a store. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did have, I had it removed, now I've got to, uh, every little helps. <laughs> Takes the difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's ruined that slogan. <laughs> <laughs> 2000, there was a heavyweight boxer called Julius Francis, and he sold the bottom of his shoes for £20,000. For when he gets the knocked Daily out? The Mirror could only be seen when he was knocked out. Oh. <laughs> Guess whose idea it was? Uh, my favourite woman doing advertising was Annie Kupchowski. She was the very first woman to cycle around the world. She changed her name to Annie Londonderry for the trip uh, to promote her sponsor. She was a Latvian immigrant to the United States until a few days before she took off. She had never ridden a bicycle before. What? There were two Bostonian rich gentlemen who bet that a woman couldn't get round the world on a bicycle in 15 months, and if she did, she'd get $5,000. And she made it round the world 14 days under the allotted time. Wow. Quite a lot of the time she took the train. It's more she travelled with a bicycle. Right. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh. I'm like... On to something posthumous. What do you do with a that dead be a, astronaut? a hard trip today. In the documentary Gravity with Sandra Bullock. Oh, yes. <laughs> they jettison They just them. space you, yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> because there's a UN charter that forbids littering. It counts as littering. <laughs> Not in the expanse. You don't want them inside going off. So you inflate this bag around the body, and then the package is put into an airlock, and the body would, of course, freeze solid. And then a robot arm takes the bag and shakes and vibrates it until the frozen corpse is turned into powder. You can post um, dead people in the post. You can send ashes, yeah. 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 A few people have had their ashes shot into space. I don't know if anybody would think yep. that. Uh, so Johnny Depp supposedly spent two and a half million dollars blasting Hunter S. Thompson's ashes into space. Is yep. that right? And there's only one person who's been put to rest on another world, and that's uh, Eugene Shoemaker. He was a rather famous astronomer and geologist. One percent of his ashes was attached to NASA's lunar prospector, and that was launched in 1998 and deliberately crashed onto the moon. Oh, cool. Who gave Hitler a kick in the backside? <sighs> I once kicked my brother up the arse, and it was so... When it... Oh, so pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? You look so nice, and there's a streak of violence a mile wide. A kick up the arse is a very pure thing when it goes right. OK. <laughs> <laughs> his personal physician gave him daily injections in his bottom throughout the course of <laughs> his career, and it contained methamphetamine. It was crystal <gasps> meth. It included belladonna, caffeine, cocaine, adrenaline, morphine, testosterone, and E. coli bacteria extracted from human feces. Whoa. But even I know that injecting bacteria from human feces into someone is not a positive thing. Well, apparently it kept Hitler fresh, alert, active, <laughs> and immediately uh, ready for the day. You don't think that was the cocaine, caffeine, and meth? And then the Allied forces bombed the factories that produced Morel's drugs. So not only was Hitler losing the war, he was coming off drugs at the same time. <laughs> that is a uh, mosquito. It's a twin-engine fighter bomber uh, made entirely of wood. Is that right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, commit to it, Alan. You were doing so well. 
the technical term for the buttocks? Anybody know? Technical Gluteus term? Maximus. Oh, Posterior something. Gluteus Maximus. Gluteus yeah. Maximus, yeah. the Emperor of Rome. The successful use of the American amphetamine benzedrine at the 1936 Olympics encouraged Germany to develop its own methyl amphetamine. It even made its way into confectionery. There was a brand of chocolate. And women were recommended to eat two or three a day. You would be able to get through your housework in no time at all. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were on meth. You'd lose weight. We done by half past nine, no, but the house yeah. would be a wreck. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite Daily Mail headline from 2017 was "Doing less housework is making women fat." <laughs> it has everything going for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which country invented the queue? Oh, you see. No, no. no. Yeah. Gonna go no one's going to yes, say. Susan. I'm going to say Belgium. Because... <laughs> uh, no, the very first written example that we have of queuing comes from the uh, bread lines in the French Revolution. So the French... Oh, I was going to uh, say French, yeah. because queue sounds That's French, really right? It is, indeed. Have you really close with Belgian, though? It's wrong. Yeah. Close <laughs> <laughs> but wrong, that's what but we're going to say about it. It's China. Susan yeah. Carman, close but wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite story about a queue, uh, 2018, Amazon opened its first queue-free shop. You scan your phone as you walk in, and yeah. there are video cameras and sensors which Seattle watch you take Francisco. items off the shelves. They, they charge you automatically. On the very first day, they queued for two blocks to get into the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Who holds the highest post in the US military? The president. Is it the first lady? Oh, completely. <laughs> no. Is it going to turn out not to be? OK, it is not the serving president. Somebody who was the president, the person has been dead for a very long time. Jed oh. Bartlett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it a George break Washington? that George no longer exists? Is it? Yes. He's the America's highest-ranking general. But on the 4th of July, 1976, so he was posthumously promoted to General of the Armies of the United States. Uh, and he continues and always will be the highest-ranking officer. Hmm. What's the most unrealistic thing about this picture? Valera. Yes, oh. that, that bra. He's Nothing. done a pump out of her front bottom. <laughs> <laughs> She's got her eyes open. OK. She's, no, people are allowed to have their eyes open underwater. That's OK. So, no, but if she's in the sea, you wouldn't have your eyes open. Yeah, but she's a mer lady. She's, she's not... a mer person. Well, she's not a mere person. I mean, it's a woman dressed up as a mere okay, person. OK, so the most unrealistic thing for you is that it doesn't seem like a real mere person. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't have a picture of a real mere person. <laughs> Try and think about how It's the orientation swim. of the tail so fin. When fish swim, uh, swim, they have their tail the, the in the tail same fin plane is as their body. Vertical. They move their tails from left to right to propel themselves. Okay. Most depictions of mere folk show them just like that, with a tail fin perpendicular. Like a whale. The but body. A lot of whales have that, don't they? Well, this yeah. is the thing. If they'd swim like a mammal, the, mer the mermaid. Would right. Yeah, but then so why they would they have swim scales? Like a, a whale or a dolphin. However, uh -huh. most mer people are depicted with scaly and shimmery lower halves, and so either this is what really irritates me: the tail orientation is wrong, and a mer person is half fish, or the scales are wrong, and the mer person is half cetacean. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> I've never loved Sandy more than right now. I'm not going to invite you to my dinner party. <laughs> you can't have both you ways. You can't have it both ways. You, you can't, can't have it both, both ways. ways. Well, <laughs> and this has really upset you, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's my show. I thought we'd talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully on board with, with that. No, as I understand it, yes. it uh -oh. in order for... <laughs> <laughs> well, your understanding of things has been lacking tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been looking at the top bit. Yeah, and nobody's paid attention to how wrong the bottom <laughs> half is. <laughs> OK. Mermaids are completely unrealistic, <laughs> unless they're half whale or they're bottom feeders. Right. Which... <laughs> it's true, because bottom... First past the... Bottom feeding fish do months. have flat, it's Matt. horizontal oh. tails. Eight-point score in second place. It's Alan! Oh. With minus five, it's Holly! Sounding the last post. <laughs> minus five and a half. So close. So close. What? Susan!
<laughs> and a half. <laughs> that was a great one. I had I had a lot of fun with that. But I think the star of that episode was Sandy herself. Susan was great and funny and short. All of these things. Holly was on a weird criminal tack for most of the episode. Matt's funny, but I didn't feel like he was hyper-involved. Alan was Alan, but I feel like Sandy really kind of was the star of the show this time in, in a more out, up front way. Like obviously she's the host and obviously it's her job to be entertaining and keep people laughing and all these other things. But every other time her and Steven, I, I feel like they're very good at not making it about them. And I don't think Sandy made it about her this time either, except, except she somehow or other, I don't know. I just, maybe it's just the mermaid bit. Maybe I really, really love the mermaid bit, but it just feels like that's what, like, she, Sandy's the memorable part of this episode. Uh, but also we stuffed Susan into a, a pillar box. Is that what it, I, I missed the name? It's, it, it's a post box, but not all British post boxes are shaped like that. Is that the case? Tell me, I don't know. The three word location thing, I see how that works. It's cool, but I I have a hard time believing that, that that would become adopted worldwide and become widely used. Although it's encouraging that a couple of countries are using it, but it sounds like the countries that are using it are those that have yet to develop a good address system. We have postal codes and we have postal codes, not post codes here in Canada. Uh, in the and they're all letter, number, letter, number, letter, number. That's how they're defined. And that that's enough to put you on a single block anywhere in the country. But our most famous postal code is H0H0H0. Zero, H zero, H zero. Ho, ho, ho. Which will, in fact, get your letter to Santa Claus. I'm not kidding. Kids can write letters to Santa Claus, address North Pole, Canada, postal code H-O-H-O-H-O, and I think they get a reply from Santa. So, Santa's Canadian, folks. Just saying. Uh, what else do I know about the post? Not a lot. I feel like I learned a bunch in this episode. I feel like it was an actually quite informative episode. The, the rocket post segment was interesting because if I was testing a rocket that would take mail from A to B, I wouldn't make both of those things islands in the Pacific, hundreds of miles apart. I would do it over land so that even if you miss your target by a little, it your rocket's not ending up at the bottom of the ocean. If you're sending it from like... Calgary to Edmonton, and you miss by a little bit, at least you got close to Edmonton. That's sort of the way I'm thinking. And you can go get it and maybe retrieve those, those letters, or maybe they're on fire. I don't know. Rocket mail seems expensive, dangerous, and unnecessary. I wish pneumatic tubes were stu still a thing. I, I have... I'm not sure I've ever actually witnessed a, pneum a pneumatic tube in action outside of like the movies of Terry Gilliam, but man, I just feel like that 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 steampunk technology. It just I don't know, man. I'd want to go for a ride in one too if if that's what drunk London gentlemen were doing back when it was a thing. That would be really cool. Frankly, I would have thought they go faster than thirty miles an hour. Thirty seems. Well, you know, like you get banged around a bit, but I imagine that's kind of safe. Although I'd do it with a helmet. I feel like if, 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 you, if you ran an amusement park, could you create a pneumatic tube ride? Is there a way you could get that cleared at an amusement park? 
There's a lot of other rides that are amusement parks that you would think would never clear health and safety. So I imagine there's a way you could do it. Would people want to do that? Just get fired along in a in a, a tubular coffin? Now, how do you how do you come to a stop that isn't just hitting the end? I don't know. These are the things I think about with this show. I love this show. I'm very I'm I'm fully on board with Sandy's mermaid complaint though. Although I, her her throwaway comment at the end, the bottom feeders, it, it is is a factor that she didn't introduce into the discussion because halibut and flounder and sole, those sorts of fish, do have horizontal flippers. That being said, they don't have vertically symmetric bodies either. Their eyes are skewed both over to what amounts to one side of their head. One of the least, symmet least symmetric families of animals out there. Those, those bottom feeding fish. Anyhow, I'm all over the place here. Thank you guys so much for the re this recommendation. It was a blast. I look forward to reading more recommendations. So if there's a, an episode of QI out there that I haven't yet reacted to, that you'd like to see me react to, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, I will get to it. I will put it on my list and uh, I'm working my way through until the, the suggestions stop coming. Uh, which I don't see ever happening, frankly, because you guys are awesome about steering me towards new, fun, awesome episodes. And they keep making the show. So this isn't going to end anytime soon. Anyway, thanks for your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, everybody. Take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.